saying is the more you learn, the more you earn. I'm living proof of that, and I know so many people as well. That's our main goal, because if you can build wealth, you create time freedom for yourself. You know, true wealth is not about being rich. Having true wealth means that you have the ability to do what you want when you want. I'm Kevin Attright, and I'm on a mission to help you with investing secrets, empowering you to succeed financially, changing your financial perspective, and growing your wealth in good times and in bad. And when the next crisis comes, those prepared to weather the storm will achieve great success while the world melts with fear. Investing Secrets with Kevin Attried. So today, I have a very special guest. Marco Santarelli of Narada Real Estate Investments is an expert in the real estate investing space. And I've spent years listening to his material going from zero to a thousand miles an hour myself. And it's a huge opportunity for you as the listener to understand the practical tips that Marco brings to the table. Marco, thank you for spending some time with us. Kevin, it's an honor to be on and thank you very much. Marco, just briefly, tell us a little bit about you, your experience and your organization. Yeah. So basically, I consider myself a serial entrepreneur, but I've always been interested in investing. And so I cut my teeth early on when I was 18 years old. That's when I bought my first rental property. So I bought it, you know, fixed it up managed it, leased it, held it for a number of years, and then ultimately sold it, which was probably one of my biggest mistakes early on. So that let that be a lesson learned. You never sell real estate, especially for the sake of just selling it um, or trying to capture the capital gains from it. You know, I've, I've always been entrepreneurial and been starting and running businesses. And a lot of that wraps around real estate because I love real estate as an investment and an asset class. But, you know, I just have schooled myself. I didn't go to uh, college or university to, to learn about finance or business administration or anything like that. It was just kind of like a um, school of hard knocks and lots of books and audios and whatever else. So that's a little bit about my, my background, but, you know, fast forward to today, I've come a long, long way and I've, you know, I've got a healthy portfolio of investments and I teach other people what I've done and what I've, you know, what I've made mistakes on so that way they can be successful and avoid stepping on the same landmines. Today's episode has been made possible by our presenting sponsors, Living Wealth, Bank on Yourself with Private Family Financing, Narada Real Estate Investments, your premier source for nationwide turnkey investment properties, and Lighthouse Wealth, your trusted light for practical guidance to experience financial freedom. I want to jump in. What are the most important practical tips that a listener really needs to know whether he or she is trying to improve his finances or to build wealth, especially in challenging times? That's that's a big question. And we could probably talk about that for a good hour. But, you know, let's let's kind of uh, boil it down to the some of the nuts and bolts of things to be aware of when it comes to building wealth, because at the end of the day, um, that's really what we should be focused on. That, that, that's our main goal, because if you can build wealth, you create time freedom for yourself. You know, true wealth is not about being rich. True wealth is about having, and I'm talking financial wealth, you're not, you know, your health, because that's a form of wealth. But having true wealth means that you have the ability to do what you want when you want, because you have uh, uh, enough in reserves to keep you alive, you know, through, um, uh, uh, savings and through passive income. And the big thing, the big thing for me, the thing I, I talk about all the time is, is generating enough passive income where you can live life on your terms. So you don't only have uh, financial freedom, but you have uh, time freedom. And ultimately that's what we all want is, is, is that time freedom to do what we want, when we want, with whom we want. And usually that's your friends and your family. So how do we get there? You know, so you, you've got to build that uh, financial foundation or that wealth. Uh, one of the first things I guess I would say is that you want to focus on investing in inflation resilient investments. Now there's a, you know, a, a number of those things. Often people think about gold or, or precious metals and they, they, they actually are a hedge against inflation. Uh, and especially now we're in inflationary times, especially over the last couple of years. So where do you put your savings? Where do you put your investable capital? You know, gold is one of those things. Commodities has historically always been a great hedge against inflation because commodities move uh, in more or less lockstep with inflation. As inflation goes up, commodity prices go up as well. And so there's a high correlation. And of course, various real estate investments. Real estate is and has always been, you know, one of my favorite investments 
uh, and asset classes because it is a great hedge against inflation. Uh, and if you think about what real estate really is, it's a bunch of commodities assembled together on top of a, you know, a, a pile of dirt. So you look at, you know, whether it's a, a single family home or a small apartment building, you've got sticks, bricks, concrete and copper. Those are all commodities. You know, they just, you know, sit as a building on top of your land. And so because it's real estate and because they're made of commodities, it's very much inflation resilient. Uh, in fact, it often exceeds the real rate of inflation, not just the nominal rate of inflation. So it is truly one of the best inflation hedges out there. But, you know, each to their own. A lot of people invest in gold, silver, some people in commodities, some people you know, invest in the S&P 500 or, or in the equities market um, when it's doing well. It's not, not always a good inflation hedge, but historically it has been, especially over the last 11 years. That would be my first tip, if you will, you know, invest in inflation resilient investments. Uh, the next thing I would suggest or, or recommend is that you invest in income producing assets. So you could invest in gold or commodities, uh, which is great, but generally speaking, they don't generate income. You know, they just sit there, you buy them and you sell them. And, and ideally, if you're going to sell them, you want to buy low and sell high. But when you have assets like real estate, whether it's a single family home, a fourplex or a large apartment building, it doesn't matter. Uh, or even commercial real estate. The, the beautiful thing about that is you have tenants of sorts. And so those tenants are paying you rent on a monthly basis. And so that income generates cash flow, which allows you to have passive income to pay your bills, survive, or, or even thrive, move, move forward. Uh, but at the same time, the asset never goes away. You keep it forever and it, and it grows in value. Uh, and so kind of a worst case scenario is long term over time, that income producing asset, i.e. the real estate, um, keeps up with the, the real rate of inflation, at least it's supposed to. Now, there are other, other dynamics that affect price, you know, over time, such as supply and demand, but everything else being equal, um, they, uh, real estate is an income producing asset. And so there's not a lot of them. The real estate is the best one. The next thing I would suggest is take advantage of these low interest rate um, mortgage loans that are out there. Like financing in general is really low, historically low. Uh, still is historically low in terms of interest rates, but take advantage of that because when you could use that debt, which I will call good debt versus bad debt, and apply that to um, investments, especially if they're income producing assets, what you're doing is you're taking advantage or arbitraging low, low interest financing to generate rates of return that are higher than the cost of that financing. And so that is a way to truly build wealth and actually to accelerate your wealth creation. It, it, it puts it on the fast track. Uh, sure, you could buy something like a, a single family home, a piece of real estate that generates income, all cash. But why would you do that when you could take advantage of lowest interest rate financing and then uh, take that investment capital and leverage it four to one or maybe five to one so you can get four times or five times the number of properties with the same investment capital and taking advantage of those low interest rates. So you're kind of crazy not to take advantage of these low interest rate mortgage loans available today. And, and I guess the last thing I would, I would suggest or recommend uh, just to be aware of it, because it ties heavily into building wealth, and, and that is don't sit on a whole bunch of cash. Like don't sit on a pile of cash because, first of all, we're in a low yield environment. And so you, there's very few places you could put it to protect it. But because we are in an inflationary environment, sitting on cash is just going to erode the purchasing power of that, that cash. So if you're sitting on cash, you're actually losing money every year because inflation is eating away or eroding the purchasing power of that at whatever that real rate of inflation is. So, you know, the whole saying cash is trash, it really is. The only time it makes sense to have cash and lots of it on hand is if you're in an, in an in, uh, deflationary environment. But we haven't been for a very, very long time, and it's not expected to be uh, the environment we're going to be in going forward. So don't sit on cash uh, or any low-yield investments. Some people you know, don't have cash, but they turn their cash into CDs, which I refer to as a certificate of destruction. Um, or, um, you know, or, or bonds, which are, you know, negative true yield at this point in time. So, so sitting on cash for the most part outside of emergency money, you know, having, you know, some reserves for yourself and your family, uh, sitting on cash is not the smart place to be if, if your goal is to, you know, build wealth. 
to to hold fiat currency in an environment like this where it's becoming um, worth less each and every year because of inflation, uh, it doesn't make sense in any way, logically or financially, to hold on to cash. So cash is trash, and what you want to do is you want to accumulate as much of it as possible, as fast as possible, and then deploy it into investments. You know, regardless of whether whether it's you know in the S and P five hundred or investment producing real estate or income producing real estate or uh, cryptocurrency. You know, if you understand that, and, and it's you know you, you need to have thick skin and, and understand the volatility of that. But whatever you do, you want to keep ahead of inflation, not you know, be a, a victim of it. And so if you sit on a, a pile of cash, you're going to be a victim of it. Go back to some practical tips around income producing oh, sure. real estate. W what are some things people need to think of? Because to someone who doesn't understand it well, or at least thinks they understand one element, um, go deeper. What are practical things they need to do around that space? What to look for, how to invest it, et cetera. Well, that, that's a good question and probably one that we could potentially explore for an hour. Um, the important thing, if I was to just boil it down to uh, bullet points, it would be this. Uh, income producing, this is my formula for a turnkey investment property. You want to invest in markets that are experiencing growth, ideally job growth. So they can be flat, but you want to be in markets that have jobs and ideally job growth. Second, you want to be in markets that are experiencing ideally positive net migration. So the population is growing because that increases demand in that market. Uh, so the stronger the demand, the more upward pressure there is on rents and prices. Not that you need to have that all the time because you get to a point where rent uh, markets can become um, uh, unaffordable or certainly less affordable. But you want those, those dynamics uh, working in your favor. So jobs, job growth, ideally po positive population growth. Those are those are the fundamentals of a market. And then there's other little things like supply and demand. You want to make sure there's inventory. You know, it's got a, a, a good business climate. Um, ideally, it's landlord friendly. So some states are and some states aren't. So once you've identified those markets, then you want to focus on areas and neighborhoods that are um, desirable that are where people want to live and will, will always want to live, you know, going forward. Um, at a neighborhood level, I like to stick to B class neighborhoods and to some degree A class neighborhoods. I try to avoid, for the most part, C class neighborhoods. So I don't want to be in C's and D's. I want to focus on, you know, solid blue collar and to, to some degree white collar neighborhoods where there's affordability, desirability. People want to live there. There's a retail market. Properties are selling and new properties are coming online. And there's just a lot of activity. Um, low crime, uh, good to great schools, that kind of stuff. So markets, areas, neighborhoods, and then ultimately the properties. You want properties that are in good condition, new or like new, uh, meaning no deferred maintenance. You want properties that are cash flow positive. There are exceptions to that rule. Sometimes it makes sense to invest in new construction homes that are in strong growth areas that don't really have much, if any, uh, positive cash flow, at least in the beginning, like the first year, two or three. But what you usually make up, um, make up for on that very rapidly is the appreciation you see from locking in on new construction to the time when you take possession of it to the first few years as those markets are built built out and growing. So your your equity growth in those properties far exceed the cash flows you would have had um, in you know a, a newly refurbished property or something that was maybe not in the path of progress or new construction. But you know ideally you want properties that are going to be positive cash flow, not negative, because you need to be able to sustain that um, unless you could turn it around fairly quickly. And and then, you know, last but not least, you want to have the right team wrapped around that property and you. So the right, you know, the right people to help you finance it, the right people uh, to manage it, uh, your, you know, asset protection attorney, your tax advisor. Um, those are the people that you will be dealing with, you know, either on a monthly basis or an annual basis. So, um, so those are, I guess those are the, the key things I look for um, when it comes to investing and choosing a market and choosing a property. And, you know, th these are very high level uh, um, answers to your question, but 
that's what that's what I would tell anybody. Thank you, Marco. That, that's really helpful. And I really just appreciate your years of experience kind of boiling that down to at least some elements that can help someone to be practical as they, they move forward. With the caveat that this is not individualized guidance, and this is for educational purposes, during today's economic climate, uh, inflation, uh, other challenges, etc., what is your guidance to your clients or what advice are you telling people? One of the best investments you can make in terms of creating wealth and as a protection against inflation. And that's the environment we're in right now is a high inflationary environment. All the last two years have really shown how much inflation can impact the cost of food and commodities and real estate and everything else. So uh, if, if someone really was to ask me what, you know, what should I invest in? Uh, the, the top of the list for me is always. In times of turmoil, guidance from successful investors and the wealthy is critical for your success. Subscribe to our premium content to ensure you are well equipped for the growing crisis. Tell us just briefly, how do we get in touch with you and your organization? Yeah, you could reach my team through our one of our two websites, uh, our, our main website where we post some very small amount of all the properties available, even though there's still a lot, uh, is Norada Real Estate.com, N O R A D A, Norada Real Estate.com. And the sister website is Passive Real Estate Investing.com. There are more investing secrets that are quite powerful for you to build your wealth. If you'd like a VIP introduction to any one of our experts, click on the link below. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single tip from any of our season experts. Okay, watch the next video so you can capture our next secrets to investing. If you're ready, it's time for you to experience financial freedom. The information contained in this episode are opinions not to be used as individual guidance. As always, consult your own financial team for your investment decisions.